Hey, 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 everybody, and welcome back to the stream. I'm Chris Petraki, or if you're new here, uh, consider subscribing, give it a like, comment down below, and hit the notification so you don't miss any future videos. And it's great to be back. I'm so excited. Um, leave me a comment as to where you guys are from. Give me a shout out there, and also post any questions you might have so I can try to address them during the stream. And I wanted to start out with a little, um, hey, Mimika, how you doing? I got your uh, question there. Thanks a lot. I'm going to I'll try to get to that. Um, a little quote just to get us going, I think might be fun, by Albert Einstein. I have no special talent. I'm only passionately curious. I don't know if you guys remember, but last time we talked about creating a, a life, a lifestyle. And we talked about how to set that up. And one of the things was asking questions, being curious. Because when you ask questions, it leads to more questions. And that, for me, leads to more excitement, right? Because I realize that there's no ending, right? I'll never know it all. I'll never learn it all to its <clears throat> final conclusion. So I'll always have room to learn. And beyond that, I can be of service to others because I can teach others what I know, right? So I can put a hand out and lift people up on, on the ladder, right? And so that's cool. So you kind of get this purpose going and so <clears throat> it's interesting that I across this, this quote by Albert Einstein, and he's a genius, right? He's, but he's also acknowledging that he's not specially talented, right? He's not even saying he has the greatest intellect. He's not talented in, in that respect, but he's only passionately curious. He really boils it down to, He's got questions and he asks questions because he's passionate about the world around him. And so that's something we all can do. And so we, we could really be encouraged by that and by his, his mindset, which is so important. Hey, it's San Pico. What's happening? Welcome. Nick. Hey, hey, San Francisco. The Mika's from sitting out there in Greece and San Pico, you're up in, in Canada, I think, if I remember right. Okay, so let's see here. I'm going to get started, get this party started, and we'll have a little critique, and then let's see what happens here. So, Mr. John Schwobel. How you doing, John? You out here? If you are, let us know what's happening. And so this looks great. <clears throat> I'm really happy with the, the way that you've handled the medium. I think that's number one, is how the hair looks like hair and the skin is really indicating that material. So your material indication, as we call it in the business, is very good. Um, and the sense of light, which I think that really goes hand in hand with how you handle your medium, because it, when you handle the, the light well and the sense of volume and the sense of believability, that ties in with how you're handling the charcoal. So great job there. Um, <clears throat> this is a difficult one because the head is tilted back. And so um, that can be difficult to handle. And so let's take a little, a little look at how we might do that. So let me um, set this up here a little bit. Um, I'll try to have yours there, and then I'll add something on top. So what I think about when, when the head is tilted, right, 
or twisting, but especially if it's tilting forward or back or side to side. I do think about, <clears throat> I think about a box, right? Because a box in perspective is easier to draw than the muscle bone complex anatomy of a human head, right? So right there, I've got a front and a side and a bottom, right? And that's what you need. You need a front, right? A side and an underplane or a bottom. And so several things have to happen there. You have to draw or imply in perspective. And <clears throat> you need connections. You need the head neck connection. You can also use a cylinder for this, right? Because you can, you can convey that, right? Because it has a front and a bottom, right? But it doesn't really have a side. You don't know where. There's a big question as to where the front is because there's no inside corner. Where is the cube gives you that? The cylinder doesn't. And the sphere doesn't give you that either. It's like, we have no idea really where we are in space in relationship to this thing. So the sphere wouldn't be my first choice. Cylinder would be my sec my second choice. The box would be my first or a combination of those. So to get into this thing though, I'm going to use the bulging triangle. And that sailboat shape right? It's dynamic. Triangle shape is dynamic. And it's gestural. You have three great gestures of the head, right? Along the top of the cranial mass, the front of the face, and then the gesture from the neck or from the chin back to the back most part of the head. Okay, so that works well. And then to describe the form in space, I'm just going to use depth lines, right, or cross contours. And I'm, I'm going to draw through with these kind of partial, partial, I don't know which, what we call them. They're sort of just these partial arcs coming through, right? And I'll just find out where the nose is, where the eyes are and get the basic landmarks. And then you have, that's where your corner is, right? You can see it on the model, right? So that's our approximate. That'll give us the front and the side delineation, right? Something, something like that it might be here. And so if this is the eyes, then the brow is gonna be a little bit above that. We want to really be clear about the overlaps because overlaps, right? The overlaps is really going to convey the depth. It's one of our five tools that we use to do that. So let's see. Um, I'm just going to kind of use a wedge for the nose, really full. I'll turn this slightly up. Okay. Keep it like a triangle, a wedge. It's like a door stop, something you put in between the door and the floor to keep it from slamming, right? And then you've got these overlaps. I'll just do the barrel of the mouth. And here's where You really need to see the underneath. Okay. Something like that. That's going to right there. You see that letter Y? That's another overlap. Letter Y principle. 
And so see, so I start real simple and characteristic, and then I kind of bang things into shape once things are kind of where I want them. This is easy to fix. If I need to, let's say, modify something, change the position. Here, it's a lot less painful than if I got into it, started with the details or started with the shading. I'm setting myself up for, for success here. Using really simple primitive shapes that show me fronts, sides, tops, and bottoms. Okay, so uh, we have a connection here down to the sterile notch. Shoulder, okay. So that's kind of, to me, I'm feeling confident about that. I can throw in the ear, right? So the ear is somewhere. Usually meets the nose when you're in a neutral position, but this is a little bit higher, right? There's a little bit of an angle there. So I'll take that angle and measure it like hands on a clock, right? Just like this. I don't want to break that plane. Just hands on a clock, one o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock. So I'll measure that angle and just bring it right down on my drawing. And that can really help get that. We have the mask of the face here. I'll start real simple. Let's see if that feels good. And then I can break that up into make a little bit more complex shape. Okay, so it's looking very generic. And that, I think, is an asset. I think that you get a lot of utility out of starting this way. You start with the generic head. It could be anybody, right? Because <clears throat> what you're trying to do is get this thing on the page clearly and quickly. And then you can go for a likeness, right? But if it's not quite on the page, if, if it's not reading right, you know, if the head neck connection isn't there, if it doesn't look like I'm, you know, under and looking up, then there's no point in, you know, going forward because it's just gonna, I'll be in misery <laughs> if I don't check things like this, right? taking that minute to analyze the position, the gesture, the proportion, and then move from there. Each stage feeling, feeling confident. Okay. And that's, that's important. And confidence has a certain look to it and it has a certain feel to it. You can feel it in your, in your body, you feel yourself, you know, getting excited, right? When it looks right, it's enough excitement to get you to the next sort of mountain, little mountain peak, right? You're not at the top yet, but you can see and you've got enough supplies, enough excitement that you're feeling you want to, <laughs> you want to break this mystery right? You want to participate in, in the, in the life around you. And drawing gives you that, gives you that high. It's like a runner. 
It's like a mountain climber setting out to conquer that summit, that mile, you know. And so this is this is the block in. It's really kind of they call it the unseen portrait. Nobody sees this. Um, only you do. And so you want to take care. It's like putting in the scaffolding. And I cover this in my course big time. And that scaffolding stands for seeing like an artist construct, capturing the action, describing the form, the features, and your objective, you know, the why, why are you doing this? Uh, the lighting and then design. So if you kind of, kind of cover all those things, your drawing will start to focus and hone in and be more successful. All right, so that's kind of, you know, how I would approach this so that it looks like we're, we're underneath. And this is my, my concept, right? This, right, is my concept of a box. But, you know, but this is the illusion, right? Once I start to add that value, it's so critical in making something read that much more, gives it that illusion of life. So that would be my next step is putting in the values. Okay. So for the values, John, Mr. John, I would, you know, I'd squint down and I'd want you to really, you know, put in, let me see. I'll go on another. can put in the shadow map really there's a map there that you can find the boundary between light and dark that's going to start setting up the form and you can go ahead and somewhat overstate that it doesn't have to be you know black but it could be this value right here this number four value you could use that and find and refine the boundary so that's one way to go about it and basically what that boundary is is the the core shadow or the terminator is where the light is denied and if you were over there on that shadow side you wouldn't be able to see the light the light wouldn't be able to see you so everything, when I squint, now that's the other thing, you must squint. Let me just check the chat here. Yes, Tim, Tim Pico, you're in Canada. Hey, Maggie from New York. What's up, Maggie? Welcome back. Zoran, how you doing? Welcome back, bro. Um, perfect. Jody, Jody from Cape Cod. Cool. I'd love to go there. I'd love to go there. I haven't been there. Okay. So when I squint down and I try to get kind of like my 2D statement, right? My yin yang 2D statement. Separating dark from light. Um, and I'm putting in my value shapes here. Thinking of that eye as a ball. I'm not thinking too much about any details whatsoever. I'm not, you know, thinking about a likeness too much. I'm just the underplane of the lip, right? That all these things are gonna start to be in the shadows. And here's the big fun part, blocking in. I'll use a big hunk of charcoal for that, or you can 
cross hatch it with a charcoal pencil and I'll just put things in in one direction pretty organized you don't have to go in one direction you can go in a couple but as long as you're laying it down in a pretty organized way it'll look better you'll be able to see your design you won't be distracted by all the scratchy noisy pencil lines so saying you could use a compressed charcoal pencil that's sharpened that's fine too so you can cross hatch you can hatch you can lay in or mass in tone so this would be massing in tone right and this would be hatching and this would be cross hatching right and you can hatch in straight lines or you can hatch you know if you have a cylinder you can follow the form you can hatch over the form and that describes the form right and it takes some time to build it up okay so from here i would just separate the light, lights from the darks in my four value right my number four or so right could be even darker and then i would just assess my edges and i bring in a value number three right here so let me sample that maybe a little bit lighter let's see And I get that half tone, the dark half tone, which is a light half. It's in the light. And I would put that right next to the core shadow. That tone right there starts to create 3D. And I would put that everywhere I find it. get you know if i have time you know i'll put a nostril in his beard right his mustache is dark so that's in the unified with the family of darks so let's see if i take that so it looks something like that very pretty flat and graphic but it's again simple i can fix it easy and so once i've done that kind of primary block in of both my forms and my values then i can start to go to the secondary so those are the eyes eye socket right the eye socket nose lips and make sure everything looks you know like it's connected and um, that the architecture is valid. I'm going to try and reposition the mouth a little bit. And I'm off to the races. You know, it would take. right a little bit more but that's your basic block in and then i would as i added one value in the lights i would add one value in the darks um and then expand the value range so i start with you know five values here and then expand to the rest of the values you know i would then i would add a value in the darks so i would add the hair something darker here all 
right? So I'd add one in the lights and one in the shadows. Keep it really simple, step by step, inch by inch. Anything is a cinch. And he's got a shadow cast on the wall, so all that goes into that shadow side. And you can play, you know, you can play with these shapes. Okay, so that's what a so for your values, I want you to unify and go darker in your values on the shadow side. Go a bit darker. Okay, you, you describe the form beautifully on the chin, on the cheek, on the forehead. Your details are good. The structure is, um, could be a little more careful here on the eye socket, um, showing off that corner. Um, because there's a corner right there. And that's where your eye socket, it's like the corner of a house. And his bumps up, bumps up right there. Here's goes a little bit flat, okay? And your face is a little bit stretched this way. Okay, so you want to find that corner and then kind of keep it consistent and then cut a little bit out of that just make sure that you, know, you find that corner and then the eye is a little bit laterally stretched this way okay otherwise i think it's it's really beautiful handling of the medium and just with some tweaks to the value on the dark side and maybe fixing the eye uh it looks pretty cool okay great job john um, any questions here? Glad to finally. Hey, Ace, what's going on? Glad to have you here. Um, let's move on to Amika. Hey, you're up. Beautiful. Love the expression. You captured that really nicely. And this is a beautiful, beautiful photo to work from, too. Let's um, take out the color, okay. <clears throat> I think you got the angle, you got the tilt, you know, you, you analyzed, right? You looked, you analyzed the position, the gesture, the head type, right? That's, those are your first, you know, 30 seconds, right? You're saying, what, what's the head type? Is it round? Is it square? Is it tri triangular, right? And since it's a, a kid, a little girl, probably the round is going to work, right? It's friendly, it's approachable, it's characteristic of young people and babies, right? It has that? There's no corners on it, so it it lends itself to that feminine quality as well. Right? Am I right? Let me know in the chat. Okay. Um, okay. So what you're doing here, your value range is really good. Expression is good. The parts are looking good. Um, some structure. You need a bit of structure. So right in, in here. You see this corner? Right, so it's kind of like a box, right? It's sort of a modified box, wider at the top, tapering down near the chin, and then it goes back like this, and you can cut, right? It's sort of like that. And then you can see the under, and then the cylinder for the neck that connects to that. So that's kind of how I how I see it and break it down, just to make sure um, it's easier for me on simple primitive shapes to find the tilt and find the the perspective by using those simple ideas. 
So again, just now it's a little bit more complex, right? We're going to take that simple idea and cut some stuff out. All right, we're cutting out a little wedge to make room for the eyes, right? So that's a cut, that's cut out. And that's like a bottom plane. But here on this cheek, here's where you can inject more structure right there, there, here. And then you can, you know, it might feel weird to put that in on this little girl, right? But I would say, go ahead and be a little more overly explanatory <laughs> with your block in, and then you can dial it back when you do your value pass, right? But for this, let's put it in, because that structure is the first thing that, that just goes, it disappears. It's, you smudge the drawing, you, you know, in the process of making and realizing this, things get lost, things get messy. And so go ahead and, you know, be a little more specific with your block and, and the, the planes. And then you can, you can overstate it or understate it depending on your needs, you know, <clears throat> but that's, that would be really good for you to, I think, have that. So if I kind of took that and put that idea in, you know, if my pencil is going to work, my pencil, my digital pencil, come on, digital pencil. There, okay, this, this, as that light describes the form as it moves down, it kind of moves in these stair step ways, right? So you've got this, 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 right? And then down again, a step, and then the chin box, right? It's a, it's not a box, but it's a modified box. It gets the idea, it gets the structure and then you can round it out later. But I'm kind of, again, building a house, going for that that uh, clarity and the simplicity. Um, ba -bum. And then all in here, I think you did really good. So I don't need to touch the features at all. You know, maybe on the nose, there's a little thing you could do there. And then I would just gently raise the value just a little bit so that the drama right of this this beautifully softly lit beautifully posed girl looking wistfully um thinking longing you know the drama comes with with the contrast Contrast is the spice of life. It's the, you know, it's the, the solo against the verse, right? It's the light and the dark. It's the high note against the low note. Okay, so then I would just want to come and adjust my edges to make sure that they're correct and describing what a cheek looks like right a cheek is goes slowly away from the light and so it's a very soft shadow and then there's that half tone so it takes some going back and forth and in this area between the dark and the light, you want to create a bridge, right? You need to get from the dark to the light. And there's this sort of bridge that you've got across. You have to create it with tone and value 
and your strokes. And so it's a it's a back and forth usually process. It's not like you just boom, you hit it and it's done. It's bringing some of the dark into the light and weaving back and forth light to the dark, the dark into the light. And, you know, again, being careful, being observant, weaving the dark and light back and forth, and then, you know, squinting and maybe referring to your value scale and knowing, you know, which values are here, take a sample of it or hold your your value scale up to right up to your photo reference and say which value matches that it's around a value number three right in the middle right the darkest dark is right there in the corner of her eye nostril corner of the mouth and back here so i would hold back on any dark accents except for those places and you did that, especially in the eyes. You you made us look there because you're the art director. And I know you did that on purpose. And that's excellent. Let's see, where am I here? Coming back to here. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm on the smudge tool. I want to be on this tool. And so these, these, these ideas, you know, you can erase the structure. You can dial back the structure by assessing your edges, by erasing, you know, right? Like I can erase a little bit out and soften things. Right there on that cheek, it's getting a little bit messy. So don't be afraid, you know, and I like how loose and gestural the hair is and then how definite dark the background is and creating a beautiful mood. And you, you went ahead and added that dark background to hold the contour of her face. And you did that as an artistic choice and you have that power, you have that choice. And that's what I'm talking about. That is really good to exercise that and know where you can make something a little better. That's your job is not to copy the photo, but to make it, make it better. You know, where can you make it more expressive, more rounder or more squarer or more clear what the position is, right? How can you clarify something or even lose something too, like lose an edge? Those are all the fun things that as you grow in, as an artist, you start to realize you have that kind of say, right? Because it's your vision. It's never going to be a copy. You could go total photo realism, but it's still going to be you in there somewhere. So just a little bit more. Don't be afraid just because she's a little girl uh, that you can't go dark, you know, on her face you can because you need to describe the forms just a little bit right just a little bit more clearly right just like something like that so that's something you can just actually add into if you had the inclination you could add that it doesn't involve tearing this thing down and uh, going back. It's just going forward a little bit. And I think you did a great job. And uh, I would uh, I'd definitely be proud of that. Okay, so fun, isn't it? It's just so fun to try and capture something like that. 
K Mamika, is that good? Let me know in the comment there. So here we go for this guy. Let's go put a little back. Okay. This one, Neil. Neil Taylor. Okay. So Neil, you have to go darker. You must. <laughs> must. And then here's the reason why. Um <clears throat> In my scheme of things, okay, in my, my two value system, you know, I want to do a two value system because it's easy. In this concept of a cube, right, um, it's pretty flat. And if I have a light side and my dark side, I sort of unify, right? I have a one, two, two read. The two sides are roughly the same value, right? And it's, it's kind of flat, but now I have a top and two sides. So we started 2D and we were adding value to to create the volume the illusion and but it's it's still a little flat <clears throat> and that's what what you have happening on your drawing now if i go ahead and darken one of the sides and differentiate it i've got the different value different plane idea happening for me now. Now it's fully 3D and I have top, side one, and side two. On your beautiful portrait here, which it is beautiful, the details, the proportions are very, very good. The anatomy, but it's looking a little flat here because of that idea, different value, different plane. You don't have enough value change here, right? Change in value equals a change in form. Okay, that's the illusion. You want to have this working enough, right? So that you get this and it's not working enough same value so different value different plane right different value different plane right same value same plane same so this is all the same value basically and i'm drawing the layers, so I need to bring me out of this. Okay. Right, so that's creating this kind of flatness. Now it's cool because it's very graphic and it pops off the page because it is more 2D and flat. So that's a style and a look you can go for. But we're wanting to create realistic portraits here. So Need to push your values push the darks it might be you know a little bit scary but you know if we take out the value information or the color information and we see how dark that is right if we sample the hair it's pretty dark 90 percent this core shadow here on his forehead is 50% gray, you know, kind of a local color to his skin would be maybe 40%. On yours, it's way up there at 
right? So is light skin, that's your local, local color, your average light, let's say. When you, so when you turn on the lights, then you get this form, right? You start to get these undulations, light to, to dark, to middle dark, and that creates the form. So you want to darken it up like last one, like the last, or two portraits back, I put in kind of a shadow map and I found and drew the boundary line between the light and the dark. The shadow map. So there's a rough shadow map like that. And then I just filled it in. Right, you can see when it gets liney like that, it's kind of scratchy. It doesn't look good. So you want it to lay down. You want things to lay down nicely so you can see the flat graphic shape. Okay, we're not there yet, but we're getting there. We're going to describe this core shadow. And then yeah, he's got some nice, a lot of nice values in here. So I would just go to town, darkening things up a little bit. Then I can describe that round cheek. And, you know, given enough time, you can really realize this thing pretty far. So now that we did that, um, you know, we can do an edge pass and soften things and sharpen things up where they need to be. And then, you know, that's all dark. That's all in the shadow right there. There's some reflection in the nose and in the cheek, right? That's reflected from the environment, but basically it's in the shadow side. So I'm gonna put it in the shadows and then I can pull out some of the lights here and there, you know? And just kind of be careful with that. And so since we did that, we have to go darker still jacket and then because value is contextual if I put a you know everything I do to my drawing affects the whole thing right it's like mixing music if you have the vocals too loud then you have to bring up the rest of the band or bring the vocals down. So you're adjusting, right? Everything, all the elements. So if I made the face a little darker, then that made the jacket look lighter. So I'm just gonna bring the jacket up. So it kind of makes sense. And then you can go darker in here too. Uh, you know, a few steps darker darker in the uh, right there right now we're kind of we're really building this thing out a little bit more so I think your details are beautiful very beautiful the anatomy looks great the parts look really good that hand is wonderful but I would say unify your darks so that you know it's not too light so that you're not getting right the benefit of the different value different plane idea right if it's too light then it starts to flatten out and if it's too 
<clears throat> noisy. And you've got these holidays, these islands. <clears throat> right. And that kind of doesn't help the illusion of depth either so much. Right. So you want to, that to lay down flat. <clears throat> Well, I hope that's making sense. Let me know in the in the comments. But you're definitely handling graphite well, very well. And I just want you to reach into your values and squint and compare and unify the values. A little darker. I know you can do it because you did it on the background. Look how dark and rich you went into that background. But then he needs to some more dark value to make him. He was popping off the page because it was light, light on dark, but then he lost some of the volume because of that. And he kind of got a little lost in the details. And the way that you protect against that is you have your value scale next to you. You squint and compare. And you just observe, observe, observe. Ask questions. Is this lighter? Is this darker? You know, is this sharper? Is this softer? Right? Is it more square? Is it more round? Is this higher? Is this lower? Just very basic comparative stuff. That'll go a long way, you know, just strict observation. Okay. So see how it looks so great, you know, the details and everything. And then you could go a little bit further, right? And get that drama, right? That light on his forehead and cheek and so on. Okay. Great job. Loved it. Neil, you did. You did great. Um, ba bum. Let's see here. Getting close to the top of the hour. Any questions? Oh, Mamika had a question, and it was about um, your equipment, right? Let me see. Let me go check back here at the top. Um, how important is the choice of materials and painting technique? For the success well those are two different things i would say for hmm, the criteria all right criteria is personal right i use certain kinds of charcoal because i like them i like how they how they feel I feel that I could control them, you know, and I like the end result. By the way, I think down in the in the description, I have my my very favorite tools, my very favorite charcoal pencils and pencils, erasers, sharpeners, all that stuff. Um, there's a link in the description that you can get that. And those are my favorite tools over time with experience. That's those are my go to things. So it took some time um to work that out so it's a really good question and so it's preference and you have to experiment so i would say you know try out graphite try out charcoal try out the different kinds of charcoal vine charcoal willow compressed um try out watercolor and see which one resonates with you and you'll have a kind of relationship that's that seems to um, to work well with you, your touch, your aesthetic. Okay. So there's a bit of experiment, experimenting that you have to do. Now, let's say once you've, you know, you say you like charcoal, we'll take that for an example. You know, the choice of materials, it's, 
it's almost not that important even though it's important so let me unpack that it's not important because um, people can you know they always ask me what kind of brush do you use what kind of pencil do you use what kind of paper is that that's secondary that's down the list what's important is the basics shapes values edges color composition right perspective shape language all that stuff right because you can do that with a stick you can do that with a brush a stick of charcoal a hunk of charcoal watercolor it's all the same right it's like if we if we look at it musically if you know your scales and you know your theory you can write a song on guitar you can write it on piano you can write it on the banjo the picture right so once you know your foundation and your fluence you can move around to to use the guitar because it has the tone that you want for the mood that you want to set you can use the harp because it has those beautiful airy um tones that you need to to get out what's inside you okay so to get out what's inside you you might need charcoal right you might need that value range that's to dark to middle to light the whole drama or you might want a watery fluid um oil or watercolor okay so but you're gonna use the basics to say what you need to say so that's my point the basics never change they don't change for music they don't change for art now having said that your tools are going to help you be confident because you need to know your tools that's one thing you need to know your subject matter the face the tools the paper and the the pencil when you know your tools it's like having good equipment when you run track or play baseball if you have a a, a torn up mitt the ball is going to go right through if it's broken, right? You need a mitt that works. You need shoes that work. So when you run around the bases, you don't slip and slide and fall. So at bare minimum, you have to have good equipment that works. Um, for art, the equipment is, you know, how your touch, whether you're heavy handed, light handed, and how it hits the paper and the strokes that you make when you fashion, right? When you sharpen that pencil that hunk of charcoal you know exactly where you're going to use it on the tip what kind of line will result when you use it on the shoulder what kind of line will result right and when you do certain marks with it thick and thin you're going to get good at that so you need basic equipment that works and then you need to be familiar with it right and the paper so that the combination of medium on the paper gets you a a predictable result more and more of the time so number one is your fundamentals and number two then is um, is the the material and the tools so you know I played guitar in my childhood I didn't get the best guitar I got a plastic cheap nylon piece of you know garbage right that my parents gave me that I could get my hand around and it felt like I was making music it was fun I didn't know what I was doing but it made sounds and then as I put more time into it they they saw that I was serious I got the next level guitar right I didn't deserve the best guitar right away and we they didn't have the money for that either so then when I got older I bought the guitars that I wanted and I paid a lot more money for those and because I felt it was worth it. So, <clears throat> you know, know your tools. You don't have to have the best tools at the beginning, um, for sure. But first and foremost, know your fundamentals, okay? All right, I hope that answers your question. Um, okay, so let's look at this drawing, beautiful drawing by Daryl. Daryl, this is lovely. And I only have maybe a couple things to say about it. 
and it would be in the half tones because your darks are really good, your dark shapes are good, proportions are very good, connections are all working well. And I just want to see in the half tones, right? Again, <clears throat> it's kind of help with this. We'll take the color information out. Along the bridge of the nose, right? It's it's darker there. It's going to help describe this cylindrical form. Okay, it's the light half tone just before it goes into the dark core shadow. Same thing here. Get that roundness happening. This, oh, I'm drawing on your drawing. Okay. Let's see, you want to add that. Right behind you. Same thing here, right? So it's really the value number three. It's right here. Anyway, one, two, three, light. And then light half tone, dark half tone, and then shadows. So you can just, um, you know, spice this up a little bit by, right? This, this top of the forehead rolls away from the light. Right, you can go a little darker and then dial it back. And then the keystone, right? Connecting the eyebrows, connecting the forehead to the eyes, eye socket to the nose. That's a downward facing plane. So it gets a different value, different value, different plane. And right here. So I'm just, um, really honing this because you did such a nice job everything and I'm just giving it a tune up here and probably you need to go darker on the forehead right there kind of like you did everywhere else and you need those modeling factors otherwise it'll look flat what do I mean by that? You need the highlight, half tone, core shadow, reflected light, and then the cast shadow. So you're missing the core shadow up in here. You had it on the nose, cheek, and everywhere else. So just pop that in. The hair looks beautiful. It looks almost like a photo up here. Nice job. And then you can knock it back just a little bit. And I can do that, put the value number three right there. Dark half tone. I'm just basically kind of massaging it. You know, you can see here where the bone meets the cartilage on the ball of the nose. But usually, you know, blood vessels are right close to the surface. And so you can see. The red and red is a little darker on the value scale. So you can you can take the opportunity to darken that a little bit. Then I would come through and just blend some of that stuff where it looks a little dirty. You know, I would try to blend it. Blend my edges or knock it back if it needs to be knocked back value-wise. And so just calibrating it, you know, just calibrating, adding, subtracting, back and forth like a tapestry. Right here, this reflected light, it's just as light, right? If I sample that and sample inside of here, it's a little too light. It's, it's jumping over into the lights. It doesn't belong over there. Just darken it down a little bit. And then the eyes are great, right? We want those to be kind of like the star of the show. So everything else is going to be support. So 
but just make sure you're consistent with your your basic modeling factors to get this thing uh, to read to read well in in every area. Right, so I put in that core, so now it makes the reflected light work a little bit better. Right, that's what I mean by kind of calibrating it. It's back and forth, back and forth. Okay, awesome. You could, you know, you don't want to do much back here in the shadows, but you could, you know, indicate like there's a little border where the hair stops. Sometimes you can just catch little lines in there. Don't overstate it, right? But they just, the eye will kind of register that as the end of the face and the starting of the hair. Right? Just like. A little a little line just hinting in there right look at that texture your material is great Daryl the fur um, the material of this kind of um, I don't know the jacket there on the shoulder the skin against the hair you got that down that's looking good okay so be proud of this one you could you know you can always go darker right your drawings never ruined if you can go darker so on this one you could and it would be fine and if you didn't want to you wanted to move on that'd be great too um just get one under your belt you know put it in the stack Yes. Okay. <clears throat> the, I wanted to talk about a concept. So let me see if I can. How we doing out there, guys? Are we doing okay? I don't know why that's coming in. I wanted to talk about an idea. And I picked this up a while back and I call it redheads. And what this is going to do, it's going to help you um, control your values because we're going to work in a limited value. Because values are definitely hard to control. And so we're going to work from light to to this right there. That value. That value right there is not black right? If we limit our values, the more control we're going to have. So you gain control by first limiting things. Is this working right? Let me see if I can get that picture in here. Okay. All right. Pick my, pick my favorite brush over here. Wherever that is, I don't even know if. Okay. You can see these faces here. What the, the common thing, what's holding these sort of together is that they have clear light and dark. And then the dark is devoid of detail. It's just shape. So on this, the shadow is mostly shape and value. And the light side is shape and value, but we're going to inject some detail there. So we're going to hold back on the value, the range of values and the amount of detail. And we're going to keep the, the details in the, in the light side. So let's see if we can jump over here and use this guy. Hey, set this up. I'll try to try to do this real quick um let me check the chat here picking up all right sam pico said he is picking up some good stuff good i'm glad you can hear me and see me 
and there's the technical difficulties are not holding us back. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is figure out what head type he is. He looks like he's kind of a teardrop to me, kind of a triangle teardrop. So I'm going to use that as my quick start. And I'm going to grab a C curve here, C curve there for the front of the neck. All right, triangle here, triangle there, uh, triangle there. So I'm looking for really simple stuff. And then I go general to specific, whack away as if it's clay and a Michelangelo putting on the clay or subtracting clay from a this granite rock, right? I don't start with the details. I start with the big overall impression. Okay, refining as I go. Finding the, you know, the height, the width, and then some of these points here, here, you know, and as they go in, where are the narrow points, right? What's the tallest point? What's the widest point? And I'll try to find those things. And then the most narrow point, that sort of stuff. Just looking for really easy things here that I can grab onto. <clears throat> okay. Um, I also look for connections. You see how that shadow goes from the lower lip right into the shoulder? Nice arc right there. I'll use that. Okay. Um, shape of the head. Shape of the head. Shape of the hair. And as I do the shape of the hair, I'm going to kind of get my shape of the face all at the same time. So the hair mass, facial mass. This is not going to be exactly correct, but it's more about how to control values because everybody has, you know, trouble values and then looking at this thing and saying, well, how does, how do I apply it? Well, doing these little exercises helps. Okay. Center line. T will show me where the eyes are or the eyebrows, right? Either one. So the eyes are going to be in the center. So I'll put it, put it there for the eyes. The eyebrows are just above that nose. So vertically I'm placing, <clears throat> spacing and placing the elements along that vertical center line. And I can break that into halves or thirds for the mouth. You know, I, I'll use both. And it's starting to come along. So I've got things vertically placed and spaced. And now laterally, you know, I'm going to use a, for the sake of time, I'll use a number two right here for nose. You can, you can get a lot done. So time is not your friend. It never is. So when you're in class, right, and you're doing two minute gestures, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, editing down, you know, really editing because of time, what you're going to be able to, you know, express on paper is a good idea. So let's, uh, let's use the idea of less values, less detail to our advantage. Okay. Modifying. Okay. <clears throat>
And now try to, again, find that border between light and dark and just express it. I see a little egg shape right there of light. <clears throat> And then just follow this along like an ant along the border here. It's the shadow map. I'm just mapping out the shadow. Below the nose, we have a nice crisp edge. And then we have the, the dark plane of the lip. Following the shadow of the lower lip. I'm not even thinking anatomy. I'm just thinking dumb Xerox. Copy it. I need my brush to be a little smaller. That tight. Cut off some of that chin. And this is this is fun. I love this kind of drawing. It's like it looks classical. It looks um, like there's a full value range there if we do it right, but there isn't. Look at that gesture of the shoulder against the neck, just like that. Okay. So something like that. <clears throat> Let's say that's good enough. Erase the construction lines. We don't need those. And we don't want the, the viewer to know how we did it, right? Now let's lay in the dark tones and see what we have here. I'm go ahead and just hold that ear a little bit. So let's see. I can go in several different directions. But I just want to be, you know, somewhat organized about it. Sometimes it's nice to see the strokes as long as they're, you know, going in one direction or another for a while. Kind of like controlled scribbling. Wanted to lay down somewhat flat. <clears throat> okay. okay. So that's, that's there, somewhat flat. <clears throat> I can beef up the core just a little bit more maybe. All right, so it starts to set off against the, the shadow that's, that's now I put down and darken Darken this up just a little. Okay. You can get these nice flat sort of pencil strokes if you remove the wood from your pencil and expose the lead and then lay it, use the shoulder. I use the shoulder, right? Not the tip, but the shoulder and overhand grip and just kind of lay it down like that. You'll get these nice, thick, buttery strokes. OK, so now I can kind of come in and, you know, I can leave the hair probably 
and leave all that one value, flat, dark, shadow side with no detail. And then I can come in here and start to play with my lights, right? So that's that kind of half tone idea. And just put those half tones in and make sure you're not just smudging things around, but describing the form and thinking of the light direction, which is top left. Right, so this is where I'm going to start to spend my construction energy is on the light side. To erase this, is this making sense to you guys? It's, it's really fun how this will work and how it speeds up your workflow because you're doing less work you're you're editing let's see i don't see anything here so i'm going to kind of erase that All blends together right there. Erase this, push it back a little bit. I need room for the uh, <clears throat> for the filtering and to put that shadow there. Okay. So it doesn't, I can't go black, black, right? So I have to really kind of use what I can, but sort of saves me from having my values get out of control by working this way. Because sometimes if a drawing is not working, it's because your values are <clears throat> really out of whack. They're, they're, they're too extreme, they're too dark, too light everywhere. And then you need to kind of bring it back to center, bring it back to the middle and unify things again, and then start sort of over, kind of harmonize things. You probably had that where your drawing just goes out of control and it's just like, you don't know where the problem is, it's because your values got out of control. And they're not reading the way that they should to describe the form and the light. <clears throat> and this thing, it needs a little support out here to make the light side look light. Okay. Yes, thank you. It does work well this way. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so that dark next to the light holds it in. Makes it a little clearer. So I would just go through and kind of work the light side and let it sort of do its magic. Right. And I would say, okay, is this a ball? This forehead, is it round or is it boxy? You know? Get that unplaned squint. It 
it's a it's a drawing is a bit of a messy process. Got to have sharp edges for this. These little digital brushes are sometimes not the best as traditional pen and paper. <clears throat> Just put a couple of strands of hair there. And where's that? Let's chisel out that pupil or that iris there. And then look at that two cylinder, the barrel of the mouth, interrupting the cheek on the far side and then creating that text, that uh, depth. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then let's see what we can do with the nose. A very crisp edge right there. And it just goes into nothingness on the ball against the cheek. And so that's that's kind of the idea with this thing. And if we if you work on tone paper and do this, it's, it's really beautiful. I'm working the light side. I'm leaving the dark side, the shadow side to just be a shape and a value. For the most part. And then I'm making sure my edges are characteristic of what's happening in the model. Okay. And I can, you know, I can hint. I can work the edges. Working the edges is really magical. Sometimes all you need is the edge that's characteristic of, let's say, hair, or <clears throat> if it's a tree, the, the silhouette of the leaves is enough to tell the story. The shape, if you got the shape right, you're going to be good. <clears throat> you know, people people will figure it out because the brain <clears throat> fills that in for you. As a read, look at it really small. Kind of flatten out some of those things on that side of the darks. I could get away with this maybe. Or nothing, you know, maybe just nothing there. And then kind of just keep adjusting the subtle play of light as it travels down the face. You get that fall off of light. It's glorious 
it's so fun. So, you know, maybe that took 15 minutes or something like that. When you get, you know, get good at these, they take, they get faster. And they're really good for training on how to use your tools too. Because you're doing more drawings and you're getting more results and you're seeing, you know, you're fixing your mistakes. Seeing mistakes and fix, fixing them quicker. So you kind of move ahead. Let's see if we can pop in the highlights. Ooh. Where's my brush? Highlight there. Ooh. Little highlight right there. It'll come out. <laughs> A little bit darker. And that is, for me, super fun. And I think traditional media for this technique works better than digital. You have to massage digital a little bit more. Yeah. So, you know, you can play with that yourself and see, see what you think. I think that's a really valuable, valuable little exercise to do. All right, let's see if you guys got any questions. Ace, way cool. That's right. It is way cool. Um, you can just go and go and go. There's a little, a little series of strands of hair there <clears throat> that I can, I could pull those out too. You know, if I had time. It's kind of revealing form with light. This be see see what you can get from this with a, as little as possible. And I think that is, that's going to be it, guys. I want to thank you for coming out and spending your time here with me together. It means a lot to me. And um, if you guys have any questions, let me check here. Hmm, is there a requirement to submit our work for review? Or is it for everyone? <clears throat> um, Ace, you got to join the Facebook group, which is in the description. There's a link in the description. Join the group and then go to, to the topics. There's a thing called guides and then live stream under the guides. When you click live stream, it'll show you the link where you can post your work. Okay. <clears throat> so mess around in that, see if you can find that and then you're welcome to uh, post up and get critique. That'd be great. Right. Um, anything else here? Yeah. Yeah, Mamika likes charcoal pencil and graphite because she's practiced them a lot. And she wants to learn color too. Yeah. Step by step. 
All right, my people. Again, thanks for coming out. Um, you know, comment, give a like, subscribe to the channel. That would really help me out. I'd be really grateful. And um, tell your friends, tell your family. And, um, you know, my course, there's a link to my course down in the description, as well as my favorite tools. Check them out. And um, see you guys next week. Okay. All right. Peace out. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.